so welcome everybody to this uh, sum up session lecture 27 of uhp2 so what we intend to do in this next two lectures not like this next two sum up sessions in this session we will uh, in the first session of sum up we'll uh, try to uh, kind of uh, uh bring out the essence of what we have been discussing all through in this course and in the uh, next uh, sum up session sum up session 2 uh we will try to see what we have to do step wise for playing our role in this existence that is what we will do to you know ensure this human conduct so in today's session we will be able to see what we have been talking about and in essence what we have been talking about is how we as human being have to perform in this existence in this nature this is what we have been talking about in essence and there we said that you know, in this whole process of deciding what is our role in this existence and fulfilling that role it is the self which is going to play the going to play the central role so the essence of what we have discussed all through in this ehp2 is that we have been trying to find out what is our role as a human being like in this whole existence in this whole nature in other terms we were trying to find out what is the human conduct what i have to do as a human being in this existence so that it is fulfilling for me and it is fulfilling for other human being as well as the rest of nature so ultimately it is fulfilling for the entire nature entire existence so this is what we will try to look into in this session today in tomorrow session you know with this background of what we have to do as human being we'll try to work out what essentially we have to do how we can go about developing this competence to play our role in this existence to be with human conduct to realize this human conduct in our living so that is what we will do tomorrow so in that context we'll be able to see the importance of what we have been doing as exercise 1 2 and you know, preparing for exercise 3 so what we will talk about today is what we are trying to understand in a sense what is the role of human being what is the you know human conduct and this will provide the base for tomorrow sum up that is given this role of human being as you know in this existence in this nature given this clarity about the human conduct how do we go about materializing it realizing this in our living so let us look at this first part so if you look at what we have been discussing we started saying that if you look at our basic human desire this basic human desire is for continuous happiness and if you look at this need of the self it turns out to be the continuous happiness so i as self want to ensure continuity of happiness within myself so the need of human being is basically the need of the self the basic human desire of continuous happiness is basically a need of the self then second thing we said this continuous happiness can be ensured by way of having right understanding in this self by way of having right feeling and right thought 
in this cell. So basically, the source of fulfillment of this basic human aspiration of continuous happiness is by way of right understanding, by way of ensuring right feeling and right thought. And both these things are going to take place at the level of self. So they are fulfilled, this continuous happiness is fulfilled by the activities of the self. <coughs> and now this, you must have been able to see this through this, you know, uh, last uh, almost two months or two, more than two months, almost three months of our, you know, investigation as well as practice that my happiness or unhappiness is dependent upon my state of the self. So if my self is in harmony, I am in a state of happiness. When the self is in contradiction, I am in a state of unhappiness. In regard of what, is the, what are the conditions outside, whether it is favorable or unfavorable. If I am in a state of harmony within the self, I am in a state of happiness. If I am in a state of disharmony or contradiction within, I am in a state of unhappiness. So basically this continuous happiness, which is the basic human desire, is fulfilled through right understanding, right feeling and right thought, which are the activities of the self. So the basic human desire of continuous happiness it relates to the need of the self and its fulfillment also relates to the activities of the self. So these are two important statements that we had made in the very beginning. And now with all this exploration that we have done throughout the course right, and the practice that we have done, now we can see that this is the way it is. This is the reality. Or if we have not been able to see it very clearly, at least we will be able to see some feel, you know, able to get some feel of this. Or at least have some glimpse of it. So I will keep all that open. That, you know, through this exercise and through effort, you know, over the last few months, you would have been able to either see that this is the reality, this is the truth, or at least you have started getting the feel of this being the reality, or at least you have been able to get some glimpses of it. Even that is very important because if you don't have even the glimpse of this and we have assumed things otherwise, then that creates so much a problem. So much a problem. Like Devanaji was mentioning that because you could not identify the need of physical facility, and we thought that continuous happiness has to be fulfilled through physical facility, he was so busy trying to, you know, get more and more physical facility, accumulate more and more physical facility, and in the process he could not even take care of his body. So that is what is going to happen otherwise. So even if you get a glimpse of it, with the whole process of, you know, rethinking will start and then you will be able to do your exploration with more seriousness and with more, you know, depth. So this statement that we had made in the beginning can now become a real statement for you, a meaningful statement for you. Or at least, you know, it is something which has to be investigated, explored, and you know, understood. <clears throat> then we said this when we talk about this right feeling and right thought. So when we have this right feeling and right thought in relation to my living with the whole existence, this is what I am calling as resolution. That is what we are calling as resolution. So. In other words, we are saying that we have to have the right understanding and we have to have the resolution right, to ensure continuity of happiness. And both this right understanding has to be ensured in itself. 
and the resolution has to be ensured in this setting. The third important observation that we made or statement that we made was that if I look at this resolution, if I look at this right feeling and right thought, it has to do with my clarity about all aspects related to my living, related to human existence. So whatever is the expanse of my living in this existence, in this nature, I have to have the clarity of all that. I have to have right feeling and right thought. For all that I am related to, all that I am living with. So basically, regulation calls for having the clarity for all aspects of our living, all dimensions of our living. So what we did was that we expanded these aspects of living. And we said that this expansion, if we see, it starts from right understanding, right understanding of oneself, of existence, and so on. And it goes right up to the universal human order. Universal human order where I am living with the whole existence in a harmonious manner. Harmonious manner, ensuring my own fulfillment and also ensuring the fulfillment of every unit in existence. And not only that, we have this state of universal human order, but we want the continuity of it. That is, we want to ensure this human tradition where this human order can be ensured generation after generation. So, we looked into this detail and we found that these are the nine aspects which relate to our living in this nature, in this existence. So these are the aspects which concerns our living in this existence, in this nature. And therefore, I have to have the clarity about all this. I have to have the right feeling and right thought about all these aspects of our living as human beings. All these aspects of human existence. So we enumerated them as right understanding, wisdom and science. Then behavior work and participation in the larger order. Then undivided human society, universal human order, and human tradition. So I'm not going to go to the details because now we are in the process of summing up. We have done quite a bit of detail and we must have been exploring into it. The one essential point that we observed was that if you look at these first three, the right understanding, the knowledge, and the sign. This is going to take place purely at the level of self. Purely at the level of self. Not at the level of body, not at the level of outside. Purely at the level of self. And we will see that this is essentially what matters right, in your happiness or unhappiness. So this is what matters in your happiness and unhappiness. If we have the right understanding and if we have the wisdom and if we have the clarity of how to ensure the fulfillment of human goal, then we are resolved within. We are in a state of harmony within. We are in a state of happiness within. We are in a state of continuous happiness. In that case, all that we see below 3.4 to 3.6 and then 3.7 to 3.9 is a natural expansion, natural extension of my being in a state of harmony and happiness. So they are not the source of my happiness, but they are the expression of my happiness expression of my being in harmony, expression of my being in a state of happiness, in a state of continuous happiness. So as far as this happiness is concerned, the continuous happiness is concerned, what really matters is these three things, right understand in the self, the wisdom in the self, self 
and the signs in the self. The details of how to ensure the fulfillment of human goals. The signs, this is how we have defined signs. The signs in the self. So this is what matters. When we went to the details of this, we found that this all is going to take place in the self. The right understanding is going to take place in the self. The wisdom is going to take place in the self. And the signs, you know, details of how to fulfill human goal is also going to take place in the self. So all this is going to happen at the level of self. And this is the source of my happiness, source of my happiness. We further notice that when we are talking about right understanding, it has to do with this block B1 that we have demarcated this activity of the self in two parts, block B1 and block B2. Block B1 is something which is definite, which is universal, which is continuous. Block B2 can be either under the guidance of B1 or under the influence of preconditioning or sensation. That all we have discussed, I'm not going into those details. But important thing is that right understanding is going to take place in the self at the level of B1. Right. And the wisdom has to be there at the level of B1 in the self. And this science also has to be there in the self at the level of B2. So B2, that is imagination, block of imagination, is talking about the details of how to fulfill the human goal, which has been decided at the level of wisdom in B1, at the level of right understanding in B1. Once this is there, this right understanding, this wisdom, this science is there at the level of self, and I'm in a state of harmony and happiness within. As a natural expansion of it, natural extension of my self being in harmony and happiness is what I express through my body in terms of my behavior, in terms of my work, in terms of my participation in the larger order. So if you look at this 3.4 to 3.6, this is at the level of self plus the body. So the self is expressing itself through the body in the world outside. And then when I'm expressing it outside, something is going to take place outside, right? Something is going to take place in the nature, in the existence, right? Something is going to take place at the level of society. So when I look at this expression at the level of human society, it will be in the form of undivided human society, universal human order, and human tradition. So the first block is purely at the level of self. Second block is at the level of self plus body. And the third block is at the level of human society, which of course includes, you know, the self and the body. Nice. So these are the nine aspects which are important, you know, nine aspects of our living which are important because we are living in all these nine aspects that you, we have been able to verify. Or if you continue to work on it, you will be able to verify that these nine aspects are there and they are important for us. And therefore, I need to have this all, you know, clarity about all this. So this was the important the essence that we talked about in uh, uh, EHB2. And when we understand this, okay, or when we try to understand the details of it, we find that one important observation that we are able to see is that self is central to human existence. So this is one important conclusion, which I have just discussed, but I can rephrase it. So what I am able to see that the self is a central of is central to human existence. Mm -hmm. The body 
is used just as an instrument. Right. So this I can see by seeing that the need of the self is continuous happiness, right. which is fulfilled by understanding coexistence, the knowledge, and feeling and thought of coexistence, the resolution, which are the activities of the self. In fact, the above this need of the self, instead of that, we should use need of the human being is continuous happiness, which is the need of the self, which is fulfilled by understanding coexistence and feeling and thought of coexistence, which are the activity of the self. And this is the source of happiness, continuous happiness. And it is this feeling, this thought of coexistence, which is expressed naturally in the form of mutually fulfilling behavior with human beings, mutually enriching work with the rest of nature and participate in the larger orders, leading to undivided human society and universal human order. So this is a very important conclusion we are able to draw that self is central to human existence. So the major work has to be done at the level of self. So with this, we can see that when we talk about <coughs> uh, self, you know, we can see that the development in the self is ensured through resolution based on right understanding. Right. This we have already seen that we have to have the right understanding first and then we have to have the resolution, the right feeling and right thought based on my right understanding. So we are recalling this here that if development has to take place in the self, then it will take place in terms of having resolution which is based on right understanding. So first having the right understanding, then having the regulation, the right feeling and right thought based on this right understanding. And then we are saying that this right understanding has to do with right understanding of the whole existence, right understanding of the whole existence, which we saw can be sequenced in this form that is understanding of human being, understanding of existence, and understanding the human conduct. So this self which is central to human existence, if I want to ensure continuity of happiness there, then I have to ensure first the right understanding, and then the regulation based on this right understanding. And when we are talking about right understanding, as we saw, it has to do with right understanding of the entire existence. And this right understanding of existence as a whole can be ensured in this sequence, starting with the understanding of human being, particularly the self, then understanding the existence, and then understanding the human conduct. So this was the sequence in which we tried to explore into the details of right understanding. And this right understanding can be ensured through the process of awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. So when we are saying right, ensuring right understanding, it can be done by way of contemplation, understanding and realization, which are the activity of the self, which are not active. So we have to activate them. We have to awaken ourselves to this activity. And if we do that, we will have the understanding, right understanding of the existence as a whole. But we can start with the sequence given. That is what we will do. Now, when I do this investigation about the existence <coughs> in this sequence through this process, I see that the self-development can be viewed as unfolding of the higher activities, that is contemplation, 
understanding and realization of the self as shown in the next few slides and this is very important yesterday we did show this slide without getting into much detail but this very properly kind of sums up <coughs> what we have been talking about as development in the self or self having the right understanding and regulation based on right understanding so let's look at this development of the self so this is how it looks like very condensed slide too much of information but very useful information all the relevant informations are put together i won't say all the information but you know very important you know information relating to development of the self is placed here there is this dotted line where we have written this transformation development so this is one important line which we have to cross so that arrow is also mentioned right if you look at the state of the self below this dotted line at the lowest level we are working with the activity of selecting and testing so that is what <coughs> we can see animal doing <coughs> doing right and a large percentage of human being also particularly those who think that they are the body and all their need is the physical facility and all that they can get out of it is favorable sensation and that transitory happiness too favorable sensation they are mostly living at this level of selecting and testing so they are busy with that now if self evolves right and particularly in case of human being that can be seen that when the self evolves it becomes aware of this activity of selecting testing activity of analyzing and comparing activity of imaging so this becoming active to this higher activities i would call higher activity i mean this whole group is called lower activity but higher is compared to this selecting and testing so when it becomes aware of this activity of analyzing and comparing and that is what we are calling as thought so this makes the difference between the human being and the animal the self of the animal is largely based or you know, busy with this selecting and testing but when you look at the self of human being it is you know even now for most of the people largely focused on the selecting and testing but it also starts becoming aware of this analyzing and comparing and therefore it starts becoming significant in the life and on not only that it also becomes aware of this imaging of this desire so this is one level of movement of the self or progress of the self from the state of pure animal consciousness, you know human consciousness living human being living with animal consciousness so this are you know, things become active this imagination becomes active but it is mostly guided by the preconditioning and the sensation because the hope here is to get happiness from outside so happiness here is an influence from outside and not the very innate nature of the self so that is the question that we have been asking right from the beginning that this happiness is something innate for you or it is something which you have to get from outside under the influence of thing outside so this is one level of shift <coughs> but 
a significant transformation takes place when i am able to awaken myself or activate my activity of contemplation so that is the major shift major breakthrough and we have been mentioning time and again that when we talk about this activity of contemplation understanding and realization what we see through this in terms of natural characteristic in terms of innateness in terms of coexistence is something which is definite something which is continuous something which is universal so when i am able to activate my you know possibility of contemplation then through contemplation i am able to see the natural characteristic of my own self i am able to see my participation in my relationship and in this system and i am also able to see the natural characteristics of other units in nature and when i see this and i can see the definiteness in the natural characteristics of myself and of other units then my desire is now guided by this my desire my imaging is now guided by this you know contemplation of my relationship with the human being with the rest of nature and whatever i see as my participation there right that becomes the guide for my imagination and because this natural characteristic that i see for myself and for other units in nature is definite is continuous is universal therefore now my desire becomes definite starts becoming definite so there is a definiteness in my desire in my thought in my expectation and now i am able to respond and not necessarily react all the time as long as my source of happiness my source of decide decision is outside or the influence of the outside i am likely to react i am likely to go wrong so this is a very crucial step that my activity of contemplation is now awaken i can see the natural characteristic first my own natural characteristic and the natural characteristic of other units and now this natural characteristic which is definite right this is guiding my desire this is guiding my desire today we think through preconditioning or through sensation that physical facility probably is the only source or most important source for getting happiness and therefore we are busy trying to work the detail work out the details in our imagination for ensuring this but if i can understand if i can see through contemplation that i as human being is coexistence of self and body and when i look at myself my relationship or my participation in with respect to other human being or with respect to nature rest of nature is in terms of having this feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and living with this feeling of harmony relationship harmony and coexistence this i can see at the level of contemplation that the feeling which are naturally acceptable to me are the feeling of relationship and not the feeling of opposition and if i can see this then this will start guiding my imaging my desire so now if i am having desire under the guidance of this contemplation that human being <clears throat> has natural acceptance for feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and therefore this is the responsibility this is the participation in relationship with human being if that happens then my desire will become definite and all my thoughts will be guided by this desire which will 
have a very significant component of definiteness universality so this is the first you know meaningful uh, development which can be called as transformation because now we have moved from indefiniteness or possibility of indefiniteness to definiteness so if you go further evolve further then we can be aware of the activity of understanding and there i can see the harmony in every unit the self organization of every unit and the harmony in nature as a whole right and if we move further we can have the realization of coexistence it the fact that the existence is in the form of coexistence which is the form of units of us in space i can realize that so this is how my consciousness my level of consciousness the whole self is progressing is developing and you can see all this has to happen at the level of self some information can come from outside so when i am inputting that information from outside it is at the level of b1 b2 the level of desire thought the level of imagination there i am first processing it and then i am moving up within myself so only this information coming from outside is interacting with the outer world but once it is there whatever i am doing at the level of self at the level of b2 and then at the level of b1 is all done by the self which we have been studying in quite detail now if this is the development of the self then we can see that starting from this we can keep moving so if you are working with the imagination alone this block b2 alone right our behavior is sometimes you know leading to happiness mostly it is leading to unhappiness our work is sometimes leading to prosperity but mostly it is leading to deprivation and our participation sometimes results you know contributes to this human order mostly it is either passive or leading to a disorder so that is where we are if we evaluate ourselves most of us are there because this whole civilization today the whole education system today is trying to support this unaware unguided self you no know, unguided imagination with this contemplation being aware we have behavior which is mostly leading to happiness but sometimes it might lead to unhappiness because this what i see in continuity in contemplation i am maybe that i am not able to see the complete part of it so if something is missing and as far as that part is concerned i am likely to make a wrong decision about the feeling regarding the work there would not be much change because now the major issue is the behavior but if we include relationship with human being as well as the rest of nature then there will be improvement at the level of work also so mostly we will work for prosperity sometime we may still think that deprivation is what is desirable and of course our attention is not much on the system in the harmony on the order so that remains unchanged but when we are aware of this contemplation as well as understanding then now i become aware of the harmony right i become aware of the participation in the larger order so now there is a change at the level of <laughs> our you know concern for the uh, immediate environment and its fulfillment so we'll have behavior which is mostly happiness leading to happiness we'll have work which mostly lead to prosper most you know uh, prosperity and most of the time i am participating in the human order 
but there are still exceptions sometime we are able to do that up or sometime we fall down here so that remains open this gap that sometime you know unhappiness sometime deprivation and sometime passive to the order to the human order is because of this missing link of coexistence and it can be fulfilled only when we have the realization of coexistence so that is what we have said finally we have the realization of coexistence and then we this realization is guiding the understanding which is guiding the contemplation and all this put together they are guiding the imaging the desire right and so on so that is where we finally want to reach that is where we want finally want to reach that we have the realization of coexistence and from that realization of coexistence everything you know all the activities of the self is guided by this realization of coexistence and if this happens then i am resolved within so this is the description of the resolved self right and its expression in through the body in the world outside so this is a very detailed diagram and which we have discussed about past so we are not going into detail but it is important to see that ultimately through right understanding right ultimately through the realization of coexistence this is how we can expand at the level of self first then at the level of body through the body and finally at the level of the whole human society so this is basically i can now start viewing that this is basically what i have to do as human being in this existence this is the glimpse of the human conduct which we will finally talk about right but you can start getting the glimpse of it <clears throat> i'll come to this later so with this study about the human being and about the self right we can now do a bit bit of you know what we have you know understood about the existence as a whole so when we look at the existence as a whole we find that existence is in the form of coexistence which is in the form of this four orders in nature so the essential point that we saw was that existence is equal to coexistence is equal to unit submerged in space and this coexistence is ever present in all times in all space and we have seen this detail that every unit in space is energized is active in space which is a self organized and it is recognizing its relationship with other units and fulfilling it in space so this is there all the time we only have to look at it understand it second is that this coexistence is ever effective so this principle of coexistence applies to every reality from its smallest atom to the biggest right and the nature as a whole third important point is that this coexistence is ever expressive so this coexistence is unfolding itself right? and ultimately it unfolds itself in the form of these four orders that we have talked about the physical order the bio order the animal order and the human order so this is how it is expressed this coexistence is expressed you know, or unfolded step by step and this is what has been expressed in terms of the this chart you know starting with coexistence the submergence we can in atness the natural characteristics all these four orders right and in this we can see that the major issue here is that when it comes to other uh, nature I mean, you, orders of nature then the important thing is all that has to happen has already happened 
Uh, are you able to see these slides? Dilsarji? Dilsarji? Yes, Ganesh, we can see them. Yes, yes. So you can see that whatever has to happen in the first three order is already happening. But when it comes to human order, whatever has to happen in human being, a part of it has happened and a part of it has to be completed by the human being. So there is the role of human being, right? In addition to other roles that the orders are playing. And that role is to ensure having right understanding, right thought and right feeling in the self, having this knowledge and resolution in the self. And if we do this, right, we can be in a state of harmony and happiness and then contribute you know, this mutual fulfillment with other units in nature with the entire existence. And this can be ensured through human education and sanskar. So everything else has take, you know, been unfolded, you know, this exist coexistence has unfolded itself at all these levels. But this unfolding of coexistence has to be completed by human being through this process of completion of this right understanding right feeling and right thought, which is basically the understanding and feeling of coexistence. And this can be you know, ensured through human education and sanskar. In that sense, human education and sanskar is very important in the you know, whole scheme of the existence. So if you look at that, all put together, this is how it looks like. The existence in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of unit symbol in a space, and it unfolded itself up to the human order, which is already you know, there. But two things that has to be done through human being is the right understanding in human being and right feeling and right thought in human being, and therefore living according to it by the human being. This is what has to be completed by human being. And now, on the basis of all that we have discussed about what human being has to do and how it can be done, now we can have this full diagram that this ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the self and expressing it outside in the behavior will ultimately look like this. Right? And if I see this, I can see that this is how this whole process of uh, expression of coexistence is completed. So up to the human order, the expression of coexistence was already there. Through the human order, we have this right understanding, the right feeling and right thought, and ultimately we are participating, contributing to universal human order, which is the final expression of this coexistence. So through our participation, we are concluding or ensuring what we have to do as human being, right? what unfolding has to take place in human being. And we are also ensuring the unfolding of this coexistence right? in, the, in the form of universal human order. So the process of unfolding of coexistence is completed through human being, right? through right understanding and right feeling in the self. Right? So this is the total scheme of things, that coexistence is unfolding itself right? up to human order, existence of human being. Now it has to be, unfolding has to be completed through the realization of coexistence and feeling in, of coexistence and living in coexistence, which will ultimately materialize the universal human order. So this is the total scheme of things in the existence now, right, up to human being and through the human being. In the light of this, having understood about human being and particularly the self and understanding the existence as coexistence, it ever expressing itself in the form of harmony, in the form of relationship, ultimately in the form of universal human order. With this, now we can see 
the role of human being in this existence. So the important conclusion that we have been able to draw through our image, through our investigation till now is the following. These few points that we have written down, you can note them. Manushi, we are still seeing the nature table. Oh, are you able to see this? No. We are not seeing any points. It is the nature table that I no. can see. Now? No, no. What are you seeing now? Nature table. <laughs> you are not able to see this diagram of existence? No. Oh. Oh, you could have told me before. Oh. Let's see. Are you able to see the change? No. Yes. And? Yes, we can see the changes. Yes. Right now it is saying coexistence expressing itself in the form of nature in four orders. Yes. Now the nature table, huh, now it has gone ahead. This is okay. So this is one which we have talked about and this is one we have talked about. Yes. So the yes. We are talking see. about this existing unfolding, exist, coexistence unfolding itself up to the human order. And now through the human order, through the human being, it is unfolding itself in the form of universal human order. So through, through realization of coexistence, through the feeling of coexistence, through living in coexistence by human being, this coexistence is unfolding finally in the form of universal human order. Right. So this is the process of unfolding of coexistence and this is the process of understanding of coexistence by human being having the feeling and thought of coexistence by human being and living in coexistence by human being. So the completion of what human being has to do, do you know, as a human being, as you know, human conduct, and the completion of expression of coexistence you know, in terms of completion. So is that okay? Can you see this now? Yes, yes, can you see? What we were saying that once we are able to see this overall expression of coexistence and including this human participation in this expression, we can now see that the role of human being in this existence, you know, what it is. We can see the human conduct. So here we are saying that important conclusions that we have been able to draw through our investigation till now is the following. Human being is coexistence of self and body. Can you see this? Can you see this, Samlaji? Yes, Ganeshji. We can see role of human being in this existence, human conduct. Yeah. Self is central to human existence. Body is an instrument. Need of the self, continuous happiness is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and thought in the self. Existence, this is about the self human being, then we have been able to conclude that existence is coexistence, which is in the form of unit submerged in space. This coexistence is ever present, ever effective, ever expressive. We see in nature as four orders is expression of coexistence. Existence can be understood by awakening to the activities of self, both lower and the higher activity put together. So all this we have been able to see and you can recall them. On the basis of these conclusions, right, we can now identify the role of human being in this existence. Right? Now we can define the role of human being in this existence. Yes. So all this put together, in a sense, what we have been able to see is self is central to human existence. Coexistence is central to existence. Therefore, all that human being has to do is to ensure understanding of coexistence, ensure feeling and thought of coexistence at the level of self. And this will be expressed outside in terms of living in coexistence 
at the level of self and body. So this is what we have to do as human being. And this can be seen as the following. Right? This, in a sense, the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence. Right? In very simple terms. Okay. And we have put a small a stick there and below we have said as mentioned earlier, to make it more expressive, we can use coexistence, harmony, and relationship right, in place of coexistence. But to be brief, we have written down that coexistence. But you can always read this as coexistence, harmony, and relationship. Right. So this we can. Yes. So basically, we have to understand the coexistence and we have to live in coexistence, which can be expanded in terms of to understand the coexistence, that is right understanding, to ensure the feeling, the thought of coexistence, that is the relation, and to expand this to live in coexistence in terms of my behavior, work, and participation. One is to live in coexistence, that is relationship with human being, starting from family to world family, leading to undivided society, and to live in coexistence that is harmony in nature from family order to world family order, leading to universal human order. So this is the essence of role of human being. Right? And this is what we have been discussing all through. In fact, if you recall, all that we have been doing in EHB1 is essentially this, right? how to ensure right understanding and resolution in human being and how to participate as a result of this in undivided society and universal human order. So this is what we have been discussing in PHV1 and this is what we have been discussing in PHV2. Right. So if I look at this role of human being in the existence and then if I place it you know, in that diagram that we have been talking about so frequently, then this is how it looks like, right? So the human conduct looks like this. Realization of coexistence, that is where I have to reach. And from there, when I begin that realization within of coexistence, right? I work on harmony in nature, understanding of harmony in nature, then having the contemplation of my participation in relationship, in this order, and this clarity about my participation in the uh, nature, in the existence, is what is guiding my desire, my imaging. Right? And this image, this desire is now guiding my thought and my expectation. Right? So all those details we have talked about. And this ultimately will result into my behavior, my words, my participation in the larger orders, which will result into mutual happiness, mutual prosperity, and mutual fulfillment of human, uh, other, the fulfillment of human goals. And when I expand it to, you know, from family to world family, it will lead to undivided human society and universal human order. So this universal human order is the expression of my realization of coexistence. So this we have been talking about time and again. So I'm not going into much detail, but you can look back and see the details. And this human order, universal human order in continuity will give rise to human tradition. Right. So this is how the human conduct will look like. And now when I have this clarity about the human conduct, with this is the background, now I can place all that we have discussed as EHV2 content. Right? So in EHV2, we have discussed about essentially the evolution in the self which connects to human conduct. So if I place all those points, all those aspects of human living that we were talking about, you know, when we're talking about resolution, having the clarity of all aspects which relate to human being, to relate to human existence. So if I look at that, this, this is how I can place this 3.1, which was right understanding, 
right understanding has to do with all that is there in this block V1. So realization of coexistence, understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship of natural characteristics. All that understanding part comes under this block B1. So that is how we have placed that 3.1 there at the corner, but inside the block. Then wisdom, 3.2 wisdom has to do with having the clarity of human goal. So that clarity comes out of my contemplation of my participation in the larger order. So whatever I have to do in terms of my participation in the family order, in the world family order, in the whole nature, in the whole existence, that is wisdom. So wisdom is at the level of contemplation, clarity of goal at the level of contemplation. So there we have written down this 3.2. Then once that goal is clear and this is guiding my desires, thought and expectation, right? So my desire will be, you know, for fulfillment of human goal and that will divide, you know, guide my imagination. So my whole imagination now is about how to fulfillment human goal, how to ensure the fulfillment of human goal. And that is what we call as science. So this 3.3 has to do with the whole block C3, this block of imagination. With these two blocks, 3.1 and 3.3, that is right understanding, <coughs> understanding of coexistence, harmony and relationship. And this guiding the imagination with science. With this, now we'll be able to express in terms of behavior, work and participation in the larger order. So that is 3.4, 3.5 and 3.6. And when I express myself in terms of behavior, work and participation in the larger order, it leads to mutual happiness, mutual prosperity and fulfillment of human goals, which has to do with this basic human desire. And that is what is one, right? So one is basic human desire. Three was about the resolution. And these are the details of that three, 3.1 to 3.9. So when I have this expression in terms of behavior, work and participation in the larger order. This is the outcome that I get. And when I expand this, my living up to the world family, it leads to undivided human society through my behavior. That is 3.7. It results to universal human order through my participation in the larger order. That is 3.8. And all this human society and human order in continuity leads to human tradition, that is 3.9. So all these points from 3.1 to 3.9, from right understanding to human tradition, relates to this human conduct, relates to you know, regulation in the self. So when we are looking at the self, you know, it is an expression of the different aspects of regulation. When we connect to the human conduct, right, it is the expression of human conduct at all levels of our living right, as a human being in this existence, in this nature. So that is all that we have been talking about all through. So this is the sum up of what we have been discussing. right? And as I said that in the next sum up you know, lecture, we will try to see how we can go about doing this, right? Living as a, you know, with the human conduct, as a fulfilled human being, what we can do, okay, as a process from where we are. So, given our condition presently, what do we do so that we can reach to this state of, you know, self and this state of human conduct? So this is in a sense what we have been discussing in EHB2. Of course, there have been many points which we have not mentioned here, which may seem important, but this is the essence that we can see. So look into it, explore. There are a few points for your self-exploration, right? 
so now this points for self exploration is very simple now we are exposed to the whole existence to human being right to the role of human being the human conduct therefore the points for self reflection is whole of it so now we are saying now the points for self reflection is the whole of existence human being and role of human being in this existence the human conduct so now you have the whole existence to explore to investigate to reflect upon so with this i will 